Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about how to improve your confidence and how to have more self-love because there's no way to have confidence and hate yourself. There is no way. And I hear this so often where people are like, well, how do I have more confidence? How do I have more confidence? Well, let's dive into it. Why is self-love so important? Because it either helps your confidence or it hurts your confidence. Very simple. You cannot hate yourself and have this amazing confidence. You're not going to have confidence. You're going to have you know, a, a, a mask of confidence that isn't actually true in front of you. I, we know some people, when they fully love and accept themselves, they end up becoming some of the most confident people that you'll come across. So the reason why that's important is because if you're confident, it's very easy to take action. If you're confident in yourself, in your abilities, and who you are, it is very easy to take action to create the life that you want to. But if you are not confident, it's really hard to take action. If you're not confident in your abilities, why would you ever do the hard stuff? Why would you ever take action towards the life that you want? Because you're thinking in the back of your head, I don't even know if I'm going to get it. But this also affects the way that you feel. It also affects the way that you carry yourself, the way that you walk into a room, the way that you answer the phone, the way that you ask somebody out, the way that you ask somebody for an order if you're a salesperson. It affects you in every single way that you could possibly think of. It will then in turn affect uh, if you do or do not find the significant other that you want. It will then uh, affect every interaction that you have with other people. It'll affect you in every single place. So when you hear about it, you're like, oh, self-love, that sounds real cutesy. Well, yeah, sure, it could. But really what it comes down to is you getting the life that you want to, you getting the partner that you want to, you getting the success, the happiness, the peace, the love, all of those things that you want to or not. Because ultimately, you're going to attract somebody who is most likely on the same level as you, who is very similar to you in a lot of different ways. And if you're not confident, you won't be able to attract the person that you truly want because your energy just won't match. And men, I know you can relate to this. To attract a, a badass, confident, awesome woman, you have to have another level of confidence. Confident women don't go for unconfident men, right? So it all comes back to self-love though. So in today's episode, I'm gonna be teaching you some tips on how to have more self-love and in turn, that will turn into more confidence. But imagine with me for a moment, I wanna take you through just a hypothetical situation, which is hypothetical, but then at the same time also still happens too much. Imagine a child who the whole time that they live with their parents, they're talked down to their entire lives. They're told that they're stupid. They're told that they're worthless. They're told that they're unlovable. They're told they'll never amount to anything. Day in, day out, day in, day out. They are told this most of the day, throughout the day, by their parents, by people around them, by their family. Stupid, worthless, unlovable, never amount to anything. It's terrible, isn't it? But it happens. Do you just think about for a second, how wounded do you think that child is going to be when they get older? Quite wounded, right? Do you think that that will affect them in some sort of way? Yeah, of course. Do you think that it will affect their confidence? Sure. Do you think it'll affect what they believe in themselves when they grow up? Yes, of course. You could see that, right? You could understand it. It all makes sense to you. I've got a very important question. What the fuck is the difference then between you and that child? Nothing. Don't think that because you're older that something is different. But there's a difference between that, you know, a little bit of a difference between that child and you. That child, their abuser is somebody else. For a lot of people listening, you are your own abuser. You're the person saying you're worthless. You're the person who says you're unlovable. You're the person who says you'll never amount to anything. The abuser is you. That child can walk away eventually. They can move out of the house. And a lot of times when you have live in an abusive situation, they do end up leaving. But you can't walk out of your own head. So you are in your own mental prison of talking trash to yourself a lot of times. I've been here before. I know many people who have been here before. And they think that by some way, I don't know why, they're helping themselves to improve when they talk to themselves, talk down to themselves. If you talk negatively down to yourself, if you talk down to yourself, you are your abuser. And I always give this example. If you've been listening to me for years, you've heard me say this before. But my friend Jay Shetty did this really great video 
a few years ago where he sat down with these ladies. They were in their 20s and 30s. And he said, hey, here's a pen and paper. I want you to write down all of the things that you say to yourself, all the negative things you say to yourself, whatever they are. Just write them down. And they were writing them down. They were writing them down. They made this big, huge list of all of these negative things. He said, okay, can you come with me for a second? And he takes them into a completely different room. And in that other room is their little sisters. So these women are in like their 20s and 30s. And they have these sisters that are like eight to 12, probably. He has that, they have that piece of paper in front of him. He said, okay, now I want you to go ahead and I want you to say to them what you wrote down. And the, the look on these women's faces were like appalled. No, I would never talk to my little sister that way. I would never talk to her that way. Okay, well, why do you talk to yourself that way? What's the difference? Is there a difference? Not really. Because if you beat yourself up and beat yourself up and beat yourself up and beat yourself up, of course, your confidence is going to be low. Of course, your self-love is going to be low. Why would you ever talk to yourself that way when you wouldn't talk to someone that you love that way? You would never talk to someone that you love the way that you talk to yourself in your head sometimes, right? Another example I always love to give because it just makes so much sense. Imagine your best friend called you. She calls you up. She was she had this first date she was about to go on. And you're like, hey, call me when you get done. I want to hear about it. She's all excited about this little date that she found. Maybe it's a blind date. They've never seen each other. She shows up at the date. She calls you after and you're all excited to hear the story. So you answer the phone. You're like, hey, how'd it go? And she's like, well, you know, he was really nice. He was real cute. He was awesome. I was really starting to like him. And then just in the middle of the date, he was like, listen, I don't think this is going to work out. Maybe we should just stay friends. Would you ever say to her, well, you know what, Stacy, that does kind of make some sense. She's like, what? That does make sense. Because you have been put, you, I mean, you have been putting on like, putting on a little bit of weight. You aren't the smartest person in the world. You're actually pretty stupid. Um, you know, you're getting older. You're a little bit more wrinkly than you used to be, a little bit more chunky than you used to be. You're pretty stupid. And um, at the same time, I think you're pretty unlovable. Would you ever say that to your friend who is going through all of this stuff of this guy that she was just liking on this date? You never say that, right? So why do people say that to themselves? Why do you say that type of stuff to yourself? You know, when you go in and you go on a date and then the person is interested and you're like, God, it makes sense because you're stupid, it's because you're fat, it's because you're unlovable, it's because you put on some weight, because you're getting older, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure there's somebody prettier out there that he would want to go for, right? Why do you do that to yourself if you wouldn't do it to a friend? It doesn't make any sense. You know, if you don't get the promotion that you want to, are you like, God, it's because you're stupid. It's because you don't, you need to get your shit together. It's because you don't, you're not good in front of people. You know, you're just stupid. You're never going to be able to amount to, any, to anything. This is how a lot of people talk to themselves in their head. You might be one of them. But the question that I have for you is what and who is that benefiting? Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you love this video, please hit the like button. It helps more than you know. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button so that you could see some more and get notified the next time I post. What good is going to come from that? I have, some, I have a really great friend of mine who used to just be the worst at talking trash to herself all of the time. And when she would tell me the stuff that she would say, I was like, what, you say that to yourself? You know how terrible that is? No wonder why her confidence was so, so low. And over time, it's been about three years, she's been on this self-love journey. And really what she's been doing, she's been growing and working on herself. She's done, to be honest, she's done some psychedelic journeys. You know, she's done mushrooms, she's done ayahuasca, she's done some other stuff. Not saying those are necessary, but that's just telling you what she's worked on. Read a bunch of books, hired her own coach, started working on herself and realized over time, she started to let those go because they weren't helping her in any sort of way. But she used to look at herself in the mirror and just talk so much trash, right? So what do you say when you look in the mirror? Do you look at yourself and you're like, damn, you're looking fat. You got another lump. You know, you're getting a little bit chunky. Can't fit into your jeans anymore. You know, even if you are fit, you're like, yeah, you're just ugly. Your hair looks like shit. Like, what do you say to yourself when you're in the, looking in the mirror? Or do you look at yourself and you're like, damn, you're looking good. Hey, you know what? You got a little bit extra weight, but you are in, in the process of getting the best shape of your life. I believe in you. I know you can do this. I love you. There was a time when I, I didn't know that I had self-love issues when I was younger, but I do remember I was probably about 20, 21 years old. And we had this guy come and speak to us at the, the company that I worked at. And he said, if you want to see massive changes in your life, just go ahead and tell yourself, I love you in the mirror every single day, a hundred times. And at that point in time, I was broke, 
had no success. And I was like, I'll do whatever the hell anybody successful tells me to do. So I was like, okay, I'll just do it. So I would just sit there and I would just say, you know, you look yourself in the eye and you're like, I love you. I love you. I love you. And it gets kind of awkward. And you're like, why am I so awkward? I'm literally just talking to myself. This is interesting. And you start to notice things about yourself. And what happens is you start to do it over and over and over and over and over again. What you start to realize is that your story in your head, if you do talk negatively to yourself, slowly starts to change because the I love you is starting to literally be so much heavier. There's so much more. There's a hundred of those every single day compared to all the other stuff that you say. And over time, over and over and over and over again, you're starting to get a real reprogramming of your own mind. Because all too often, what happens is we get caught up in, caught up in comparison versus just being like, hey, I just love you the way that you are. But the problem with comparison and seeing the other people on Instagram and seeing what other people's lives are is comparison is the thief of all joy. You know, it's not that you don't love your body. You don't love your body because you're looking on Instagram. You know, you tell yourself you, you know, you're getting fat because you're comparing yourself to a Photoshop model on Instagram. You know, you talk trash to yourself because your friend from high school who you haven't seen in 16 years just bought a massive house or you know, you're pissed off that you're driving a, you know, a 17 year old Kia and you're thinking about the 18 year old Bitcoin millionaire who's putting up pictures of his, you know, brand new Lamborghini and you're stuck in this comparison and comparison is not a bad thing. Depends on what you're comparing. That's what actually matters. So people are always like, comparison is so terrible. Well, it depends on what you're comparing. Humans compare, you know, if you think of where this goes back to years and years, you know, hundred thousand years ago, if we see an animal flying at us from a distance, the big, huge animal on the ground running towards us, we need to compare. Okay, how big is that animal compared to me? Is it smaller than me? Is there something I need to be worried about? How fast is this animal coming? Do I need to run from it? Do I have enough time to run from it? Do I need to run up a tree instead of run from this animal in a different direction? And comparison is something that actually kept us alive in some ways. It still exists nowadays, but it doesn't mean that we need to compare ourselves with other people and then make ourselves feel like crap because that sort of comparison is the thief of all joy. So when you look at your life, you are where you are. That's a fact. You weigh as much as you weigh. That's a fact. Your bank account has as much as it has. That's a fact. You can't change that in any way right now. The only thing you can change is where you go from here forward. What you do from here to the next moment. I do know one fact. It will be a lot harder to go to the gym, to stop procrastinating, to work hard on yourself when you feel like crap. And guess what? When you talk trash to yourself, doesn't that make you feel like crap? So if you actually want to change yourself, you should probably be on your, your, your own side. You should probably start motivating yourself and start talking better yourself. But you have to start thinking about this. How much better do you feel when you talk better to yourself? How much better do you feel when you think better of yourself? How much better do you feel when you get like, you know, I can give an example for, for a guy. Ladies, I'm sure you have the exact same, same example, but in a different way. But men probably know this feeling. I know that when I have like a really nice suit and I go out, I feel differently about myself. What if you felt that way all of the time? How could you bring that in more? How does that make you feel to be like that? Could you do more of that for yourself? Imagine if you had that feeling all day. Imagine what you could do if you had that feeling all day because ultimately you have to be your biggest fan. You have to be. When no one else believes in you, you have to believe in yourself. You have to be your biggest fan, but most people are the biggest critic. And being your biggest critic is not gonna help you in any sort of way. You have to get on your own side, be your biggest fan. And when you do that, you'll start to have more people come onto your side and be a big fan of yours. You know, like I used to always do talks and there was one thing I used to do, it was really interesting. When I really started to see that a lot of people had self-love issues is I used to give talks and I'd be in front of everybody and say, okay, I'm gonna give you 60 seconds. I want you to write down everything that's not good about yourself, that you don't like about yourself, everything you hate about yourself. Ready, set, go. And people would like, furiously write so many things, what they don't like. They don't like their hair. They don't like their ass. They don't like their legs. They don't like how they fit in jeans. They don't like blah, 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 blah. They don't like their intelligence of all kinds of things. Massive lists of all of the things they don't like about themselves. Okay, time's up, 60 seconds. People would have these huge lists. It was crazy. And I'd say, okay, 
Another 60 seconds. Go ahead and write down everything that you love about yourself. It was like crickets. People come up with like four things. They come up with like 75 things on the things they hate about themselves. 34 things about the things they hate about themselves. They come up with like four things they love about themselves. People are too busy focusing on the things they don't like about themselves versus the things they do like about themselves. When you love something, you want to help it and you want to improve it. If you don't love yourself, you don't want to help yourself and improve yourself. If you hate your body, you can change your body by hating it, or you can love your body so much that you want to take better care of it. If you focus on shit, you will get more shit. There's actually, uh, The Rock has a quote. And the quote is, when you focus on you, you grow. When you focus on shit, shit grows. And you got to start thinking to yourself, what am I focusing on throughout the day? You know, and, and make a list. Do this for yourself. If you want to try to help yourself get rid of these things, make a list of all of the things that you say to yourself. All of your fears, all of your limiting beliefs, all the things you hate about yourself. Make this massive list. Look at it. Take a lighter and set it on fire. Now, you know, make sure you do this in a safe place. Throw it inside of a, you know, your bathtub or whatever it is. Don't burn your house down and, and blame me for your house burning down. But look at all of your fears. Write them all down. Get everything down on pen and paper. Take a pen and paper, write it all down, and then take your lighter and light it on fire. And tell yourself that's the last time that I can say that to myself. From now on, I'm going to be my best friend. From now on, I'm going to be my biggest fan and not my biggest critic. From now on, I'm going to talk positively to myself because I need someone in my corner all day, every day, and that needs to be me. Because ultimately, what you focus on, you get more of. If you focus on you, you'll get more growth. If you focus on shit, you'll get more shit.